You got your blue skies and you got your blue sea. An ordinary game plan backdrop, you might say. But what if we were to add to that backdrop? 100 foot limestone cliffs. Crystal clear bodies of water that are just dying to be snorkeled. Not to mention sunken wrecks waiting to be explored. Toss in picture perfect landscapes. What do you get? You forgot to mention the wildlife. Oh yeah! Did you mention animals straight out of Africa? Now what do you get? You get an all-out full frontal assault on an island that has adventure leaking out of every pore. From bear cats to kayaks, wrecks to treks, giraffes to George. That's our dive guide, by the way. They're all found in this stunning locale, guaranteed to leave you speechless. I'm Trisha. I'm Parlo. And, and this, this is Coron! Part of the Calamian group of islands at the northernmost tip of Palawan is Coron. With a population of only 40,000, this sleepy area where fishing and pearl farming are the main sources of livelihood has been, for the past few years, a burgeoning prime tourist destination. What we see here is uh, more development in terms of tourism. People are beginning to realize that um, Coron is a destination. Basically, we can see a shift from fishing and trade into tourism. And who can blame them? With clear blue waters, abundant marine life, and spectacular limestone cliffs, Koran is indeed a feast for the senses. And Carlo and I couldn't wait to experience firsthand what all the Koran hype was all about. We're here! Welcome to our beautiful Koran in the Kalamianis group of island, northern Palawan. First on our agenda was a trip to Koran Island, famed for its steep limestone cliffs and stunning views. The scenery of this place was just so breathtaking that Trish and I didn't have to get off our boat to appreciate its majesty and soak in its primeval atmosphere. Oh, they're so perfect, you'd almost think they were magic. Oh, okay. It's very low it's, it's very low. But the best way to see Koron isn't on foot or any motorized mode of transportation. It's this. Sea kayaking in Koron is said to be one of the best in Asia, which is what Carlo and I are about to find out for ourselves. There are so many islands here, so you just put your kayaks on the boat and you can go visit from island to island and kayak. It's like taking your own pace. That's why I think kayaking would be one of the best ways to go around and take a look at uh, Koron. Yep. Boy! <laughs> okay, that was obviously really slick. See ya! When it comes to kayaking, there are several enclosed lagoons in Koran Island to choose from. So the difficulty lies not in mastering the art of paddling, but rather in deciding which lagoon to explore. And at the suggestion of Robert, our guide, we decided to check out Twin Lagoon, an area that is reachable only when the tide is right and when your back is properly aligned. Okay, this is how you do the limbo kayak style. <laughs> There's a tequila shot waiting for Okay, here we go. Oh, this is so Lie cool. Down. <laughs> yeah! We went! And that is how you do the kayak limbo. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. Wow. Paddling through Twin Lagoon felt like passing through a time warp into a land before time. Towering limestone cliffs draped in lush jungle, exotic looking spiky plants sprouting from cracks in the rock, and only the distant sounds of insects and birds flying by. Sea kayaking definitely lets one explore Palawan's natural treasures on an intimate level. My first thought was, wow, these, these things actually look better for real, you know? They look much more impressive when you see them up close as compared to seeing them on photos. They sort of look like giant chess pieces that people carved out, but, but they're not, you know? They're, they're carved by nature. It's sharp. The rocks from a distance look like they're, they're smoothed out by the rain, but the reality is when you go up close, when you touch them, it's quite a sharp in the Gillette razor sense. It's, it's seriously that sharp. That part of Palawan is just very visual. And that in itself, it's just so breathtaking. There's so much to see, 
and there's so many beautiful things to see. But in the Twin Lagoon, I don't know. I don't. I just don't know how to describe it. Oh. And that's the yes, and with that, we have scared half the bird population in Palawan away. After this, uh, kayaking sa tayo. We're going to hidden lagoon or a secret lagoon. Okay, Robert, show us a secret lagoon. Lead the way. If I was passing it by and if I wasn't a local, I wouldn't know it was there. There's a pathway pala leading to another lagoon through these mangroves. And we got there and it was low tide. And so we had to get off our kayaks and then practically drag our kayaks through, through the mangroves and into the lagoon itself. Look at the jellyfishes. Oh, wow. Look at them, look at them. When you're face to face with the cliffs or, or the sheer magnitude of everything. I remember telling Trisha, Trish, I can't say anything. You know, you're just rendered so speechless by the whole thing. That, that's how powerful the whole place was. That's how beautiful it was. And just when we thought we had seen everything on this island, Robert led us to a place where Karan's beauty was magnified even more, the waters of Kayangan Lake. What do you think? I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Okay, sweating is officially over. Time to swim? It's time to snorkel! Let's go! Of the seven lakes found in Karan Island, Kayangan Lake is only one of the two that are accessible to tourists. It has been recognized three times as the cleanest and greenest lake in the Philippines by the DENR. If you go down into the lake, it's really clear, and you can see the, even the limestone cliffs extend down even below the water level, and the view there is even, even more exciting because it's, it's kind of eerie, and yet, it's just so beautiful. What I like about it is that it was a mixture of both salt water and uh, fresh water from rain. But I'd, I'd see, oh, hey, um, okay, this is fresh water here, and okay, it's salt water over here. So it's, it's like a mixture of both. It's like snorkeling in the Grand Canyon. I felt like... I was snorkeling in an ancient civilization, and I found it cool because to see to see rock structures like that and to see fishes swimming under them, on you know, um, amongst them and underneath them, it, it made for a very visceral, you know, aesthetic experience, which I appreciated. I liked it. Snorkeling is a good way to see the beauty of Quran's underwater world. But if you want to witness what Quran is really about, you gotta go deeper, and that's what we're doing next. <laughs>